Hey guys, this is Dave again. As promised, we're going to be talking about the material blending. This right here is a little example of what it does. What we have here is a simple matinee, and once we hit a trigger, a simple cinematic starts showing off an object with basic uh, metallic, but this blends into a different, or it becomes like a different object with uh, a sphere with a lot of spikes and they're black and they're actually moving a bit. This is just an example of what you can do with the material or dynamic materials slash material blending. I'm gonna call it material blending even though I don't know if it's uh, the right declaration or the, the right name for it. But this material right here is uh, a bit complex as you can see. So we're going to start off really easy using only uh, the diffuse map and uh, a normal map. Let's open up another project. We're going to open the material show. Or you can create a new project. Just make sure that the starter content is loaded with the new project. Open it up. First what we want to do is we want to create or we add a mesh to our scene. It can be any mesh you like, but it has to be a mesh. Let's go to the shapes and add in a, let's say, uh, shape sphere. Yeah, works. Okay. Make sure that whatever mesh you'll be adding to the scene, if you want to use the uh, texture blending or uh, at all dynamic materials, the mobility has been or has to be set to movable, else it won't work. Then go to uh, materials and create a new material. This one, let's call it dynamic test material. Save it, apply to your mesh. This, uh, why would you do that? Simply because you can see in real time uh, all the changes and all what you did within the material you can see right on the screen. Double click this and in my first tutorial I was talking about instancing and that you always should use parameters so that's what we're gonna do here so right click on a search for parameters and add in a texture sample parameter first I'm gonna call it diffuse map a set the group to diffuse Pressing Control W to duplicate it and making it a B. Duplicate these two again. And instead of diffuse map A, we're going to call this uh, normal map A and set another group that we call local. And for the uh, second one, we're going to do the same, but normal map. B and set it to uh, local again. Now what we have to do is we gotta find textures we wanna blend between. Go to textures and what texture you use is not important really. Just make sure that a diffuse and a normal map is available. First thing first, let's say uh, we wanna use this texture. Go in here, apply it and then the normal map file. Search for another texture. Okay, let's say we go to the rock basalt. This I'll do just fine at the normal map. And here we go. Next thing what we need to do is we we have to be able to blend between both of these textures using a parameter. And how we're going to do that? Very simple. Press L on your keyboard, left click, and add in a lerp. Plug in your first texture into A, your second texture into B, and duplicate the lerp. Do the same thing with the normal. Add it right here. And now what we need is we need a parameter that drives the alpha. Remember A is 0, B is 1 and anything in between will blend between those two. 
add in a scalar parameter again, S on your keyboard, left click, and this one I'm gonna call dynamic change. Uh, right, and plug this into the alpha of both of these so that one parameter drives these two parts of the material. Yeah, now what we can do is what I wanna add is a parameter again, but a vector parameter. Dynamic tint, we're gonna call it. And you might have a guess what we're gonna do with it. Add a multiply, plug these two into the multiply, and the multiply into our lerp. And set the dynamic tint to white. Okay, now just connect these to their respective uh, material nodes, and here we go. Now we have uh, the dynamic change, but uh, parameter set to zero. Our stone bricky material will be applied if we set it to one. Our stone texture will be applied. If we set it, let's say 0.5, it will have uh, both of these. So we'll, it's actually a mix like 50-50. Set it back to zero. And if we change the dynamic tint to, let's say, red, this texture will become red. Why do I add it? Or why do I put it into a material? I'll show you right away. Make sure that the parameters you set, that you are able to remember them, because these very parameters we're gonna be using for the material for the uh, matinee. Okay, save your material. Make sure it looks like this or kind of like this. Save it, close it, and once it's done compiling again. What we want to do is we want to create a little event, so once we hit a trigger, the material fading or blending should take place. Go into the uh, volumes, search for the trigger volume, drag it into your scene, change the value of let's say 100, 100, and place it in front of the object. So once you hit this trigger volume, the uh, blending occurs. Next what you need is a go to all classes and search for matinee. This is a little bit different to the UDK because within the UDK you didn't have an actor uh, for the matinee. So the mat matinee was saved or different matinees but not as an actor within your scene. With the Unreal Engine 4 the matinee is placed into your scene as an actor, which is actually a bit cool, I think. To uh, now make this action work, to trigger a material, we go to the blueprints, open level blueprint, but first click on the trigger volume, because that's what we'll be needing. Blueprints, open level blueprint, right click, go to the add event for trigger volume collision and begin overlap. So once our character overlaps with the trigger volume, something will happen. What we want is that this event only happens once, so it's a trigger once actually. How do we do this? I did find a little workaround. Again with your trigger, vo uh, trigger volume selected, right click, search for enable, and set actor enable collision set it up so it looks well, it's easy to understand. So what it does is it sets the collision to no collision at all for the trigger volume. If this box is checked the collision will be enabled so you can fire or you can overlap with the collision of the trigger volume. If it's not checked then there will be no collision at all anymore and it can only be uh, fired once. The second part 
is click on your matinee, right click in here and just search for play. And here we have somatic play and it will all, um, this play is firing our matinee actor. So playing the matinee itself. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. I don't uh, want to go too deep into the uh, scripting. So compile, it's compiled. Uh, and save it. And now we're gonna have to go into the matinee. So select your matinee actor in the scene. Go to open matinee. And okay. I hope you have, or you already know a bit about matinee. It would help. If not, it's okay as well, I guess. Gonna zoom out a little. And now to make sure that we really drive the material of this object and remember this object has to be set to movable or else it won't work. We So click on it, right click in here, add new empty group. This we can simply call material dynamic T. Uh, sounds weird, okay. And remember if we open up a material what we had is we have a scalar parameter with one output only and then we have a vector parameter with multiple outputs keep that in mind and why do we keep that in mind because we, if we right click on our material dyn to whatever um, you'll find two material options the first is the float material, so add this. Again, click on the top and add in a vector material parameter track. And as you might have guessed, the first float, in our case, will drive the dynamic change with the output of only one. So it's a number, only one number to be changed. If we click on our dynamic, you can see there are different values you can change. And for that we need the second one, which is the vector material parameter. Okay, let's get started. Click on your first float material parameter track. And what you need to do is click on the material that the mesh uses. If you don't know where it is, simply go into your mesh details panel and browse JS and content browser. And there you have it. Next step. And here, okay, let's, let's open it up real quick. Add a element and use your material. The same we're going to do for the second part. Add element because it's the same material. Now we need to add in the values. So the first one we needed was a float. So we need the uh, dynamic change. Okay, we're going to set the group to, let's say, dynamic. So it's easier for us to remember what this was. Or what is what and so on. Dynamic again. So copy paste the dynamic change. And the matinee uh, actor. Paste this to our float. Go back to your material. Go into the dynamic tint. Copy this value. And add it in here. Okay, this is the. Okay, so I'm sorry, this is the dynamic tint, and the first one was the float, which is the dynamic change. And now we have it. What we have now is our first is the float that will drive the blending, the actual blending between both textures. And then the second thing we have is the vector parameter, the dynamic tint, which will only drive this part of our material the color, so to say. And now we're gonna play with it a little. The best way to start with it is to select your material parameter track and add in a key. Go to the, or go to five seconds in this case, add in another key, right click and set the value. Set the value to one and you can see we have a rock texture and it's blending between both textures. Pretty cool, huh? But why is our object black? Pretty easy. We added a vector material parameter track and our base right here is 
1110, which is a white color. But if you add in this track, the default value will always be 000, a black color, so to say. What we can do is you add in or click on a track, hit enter, right click, set the color, and set it to white. Way, way better. During the fade, we want the object or the first texture to become, let's say, get a red tint. Again, right, add a keyframe, set the color to red in this case. Hit OK. As you can see, first it's actually multiplied by one, which is the base color, and then it's multiplied by a red color, which makes the first material a bit reddish, and then it blends perfectly into a rock material. You can now close both of these things, save them, save the project, and again it's combining the shaders, and if you hit on play, nothing happens right now. But once you hit the uh, trigger, the event will happen. And this is a very very cool effect, you can use it anytime you want and that's why I really recommend if you haven't watched it already go into the advanced material tutorial I once did because if you're using parameters all the time you can't just create an instance and play with the values and change your material without having to duplicate it. Now you can also drive almost any parameter within Matinee or maybe a script I haven't found out or I haven't figured out how to use it um, only using a script but with Matinee, you can really drive all of these parameters. So that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you liked the tutorial. If you have any uh, suggestions whatsoever or you want to have a, more, a tutorial more detailed for this topic, just write a comment. And see you guys next time. Dave out. Bye.